Hello, welcome to our Aviva Select California YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about Aviva in Dutch 2023. I'll talk about configuring tags for historical logging, configuring historical logging, configuring storage to historian, and then lastly, configuring store and forward. So the first thing I'm going to do here is configuring tags for historical logging. And in order to do so, you need to select tags in the um, tag name dictionary. So in the tags ribbon here, by uh, clicking on the tag dictionary. And then if you click on select, you can see the tags available in your application. So I'm going to just click on the first one here, just a random tag. It's the Mixer 100 Agitator PV. And as you can see here, um, I have the options to log data and to log events. So this is one way to do it. Um, obviously, if you have hundreds of points, you don't want to be doing it one by one. You don't want to be logging and historizing these points one by one. So the best thing to do it is, um, I'm just going to save this for now, but the best way to do it is actually to manipulate the database. And that's possible through um, dumping the database from your in Dutch application um, to a CSV file and then making the changes there. Uh, you can pick the tags that you want to historize and then saving it and then loading that DB back to your um, application. And um, in the next section, we're going to see how to do that. So in order to manipulate the database of any in Dutch application, all you need to do is to go to the application manager and then um, this is where you'd find all of your in Dutch applications listed. And in my case here, I'm using this WS underscore app, which is a demo application. And I just need to make sure that I have that selected. I've selected the desired application and then I could utilize these DB load and DB dump utilities. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to dump the, the, the DB first. So I'm going to click on that. And um, it just tells me, it gives me the option of changing the name. I'll leave that as it is, the db.csv file. And um, always make sure that you know where is the application directory. Um, in case you don't know where that is, I'm just going to click on OK now. And in case you don't know where that is, you can click on these ellipses here and check the properties. So you click on properties, you can find the application path. So it's in users, public, wonder where, in Dutch application. And then this is my application. So now in order to access that CSV file, I have to navigate to that file path. So here I am. I navigated to that um, application directory. And I can see my application here, ws underscore app. So I'm going to double click on that. And you should find the db here. This is what we called it, just db.csv. So if I open that, I can see uh, my database for this application. So here I have the database for my application open. And as you can see here, these two columns are related to uh, logging and event logging. And you get to manipulate each tag uh, with a yes or no if you want it to be logged and if you want the event to be logged. Once you're done manipulating this with yes and no, um, you save it, and then we can utilize the DB load feature in our application manager to load this database. So I'm going to make sure that I'm, I have this um, application selected, and I'm going to utilize the DB load. So I click on that. It just gives me a small warning here that I have backed up my application. And um, make sure that you're in the same application directory. So there's only one db.csv file in that directory. I'll make sure that that's the one I'm selecting and I'll say okay to that. It will ask me whether um, I want, so obviously some of the uh, points or some of the tags are existing already and they're duplicate names. So it's gonna ask me whether I want to replace them or I want to update existing with new information. So once I'm happy with the DB and I uh, loaded that to my application, I can come back here to the window maker one more time and look at the tag dictionary and click on select. Um, 
I can just click on any random tag to double check whether it's logged and um, We've checked also the log events. If I'm happy with that or not, you can always uh, change these things here from the tag name dictionary. If you have just one or two tags to change their properties, if you're happy with what you have, you could just leave it as it is and move on to the next step. So now this is how we configure tags for historical logging. We go through the tags one by one, or we do the uh, DP load or the DP dump utilities basically we utilize those to make changes to multiple tags at the same time so the next step is going to be configuring historical logging and in the aviva and touch hmi 2023 um, the location for that is actually in file so i'm in the uh, window maker again i clicked on file and uh, I click on configure and this is where historical logging is. So it's in a different location, but it's still there. And it's pretty straightforward. There isn't much to configure here and it's just check boxes basically and few cells to fill here and there. But it is very, very straightforward to log the data or to historize the data in InTouch 2023. The first thing that I wanna make sure that I have enabled or checked is the historical logging. This option here to keep log files for how many days um, is actually about um, typing the number of, you need to type the number of days prior to the current day to retain log files. Log files are kept for the current day and the number of days within the specific retention period. So log files that are older than the retention period are deleted. Setting the value to zero retains all log files um, indefinitely. So that's why I'm keeping that as zero. The other options that you have here are uh, store log files in application directory, which means that you wanna save the log files in the same folder as the InTouch application um, creating the log file. And this is what I'm choosing. That makes more sense to me. The other option is to store the data in another specific location or another directory for whatever reason. Um, last thing that you need to set here is, uh, and in case you choose this store log files in a specific directory, you need to type in the directory, right? So I'm keeping that as in the application directory. And then the logging node is, in my case, because I'm just working on a single node here, is the local host. You get to choose any other node in your network. It could be your um, the same node where your dev uh, environment is, or it could be the node where your tag server is, or where your historian is, that's that's your choice. As long as it's a node that um, you're in touch can see, it's on the same, it has to be on the same network. So once you're happy with all of these settings, uh, you just need to click on save. Obviously I didn't change anything here, so my save is grayed out, but um, um, in your case, once you open this, the enable historical logging is not going to be checked. And once you check it, the save option will pop up and you can click on save. All right, so now that we're done configuring historical logging, I'm going to move to historian logging. And the first thing I want to do is to enable storage to historian. Um, you want to fill the historian node name in my case, because again, I'm working out of a single node. Uh, it's just a VM. Um, one VM here, so I actually have my historian sitting on the same VM. So I'm going to say localhost for the historian node name. In your case, this might be a different node, um, so you need to give that node name of the historian. Uh, the associated domain, um, and then um, another very important feature or property here to configure is the history store forward directory. And um, that's basically where you need to type the path to the local folder location where the files related to store forward um, are stored. The files will allow the historical data to be stored temporarily if the connection to the historian server is lost. After the connection is established, the historian server will sync with the files from the store forward directory and preserve all the information. And um, Best practice is to keep that in the same application or the same in touch application directory. And in my case here, I have that in users, public, wonder where, in touch applications. 
And then this is my application, WS underscore app and store forward. Uh, if I go back to the application, I can see this folder here. So there's already a folder created for a store forward inside my application. And I'm just utilizing that folder um, to keep my temporary files or temporary data until the historian is back up in case I have my historian down for whatever reason. So um, I'll keep this file directory here. And the next thing you need to set up is uh, checking around, checking this log alarms and events. So if you want to log uh, your alarms and events from your SCADA system or your um, in touch HOI, you need to check this box here. So once you um, have this log alarms and events checked, you need to set the alarm query. And um, alarm queries follow a specific syntax uh, for the local node. So the syntax is backslash provider explanation mark alarm group. In our case, it, this means it's going to be backslash in touch because that's a provider explanation mark and then the alarm group, which is a uh, dollar sign system. Um, you could use, um, for, for example, for like a, a remote node, it would be backslash node name, backslash provider, explanation mark, alarm group. So you're going to have to add the uh, node name here or the remote node name. So if you have like a, a remote node name called, I don't know, node one, so you're going to type in node one here and then backslash in touch and then the rest of this. Uh, so this is how you set alarm query. And if you need more help to understand this, you can always click on the, uh, you go back to the, click this arrow back and you can find the help uh, files. Just click on that. It can take you to the um, alarm queries or how to set up the alarm query. The next thing here is the um, configuring the um, affix string. So if you want to add a, a prefix or a suffix to your strings. Um, this is how this is where you would do it. And this is uh, how you how you check it. Basically, how you enable it. In my case, I, I'm not interested in doing that, so I want to um, uncheck that box. So this feature is actually important and helpful in those scenarios when the same application is used on multiple nodes. And connected to the same historian server. You can use a unique um, suffix or prefix to differentiate between tags from different nodes. There are also some advanced settings here that you can change or uh, you can edit. The first thing is this TCP port. Uh, you could change that here, um, but this is the default port that uh, the application is set with. Um, also, some data management, like things like the store forward threshold, which is basically um, the size in megabytes of free space to reserve on the HCAP uh, store forward desk. So the space designated will not be used during storm forward. This value obviously cannot be negative. Um, it has to be basically between zero megabytes and 65,535 megabytes. Um, the other thing is the store forward minimum duration. Um, the minimum duration in seconds for the HCAL to function in store forward mode. The HCAL will function in store forward mode for this length of time, um, even if the condition that caused the HCAL to function in store forward to start with uh, is no longer existing. Um, the allowed values are 30 seconds to 3,600 uh, seconds. And there are other um, advanced settings that you can play with, but everything is set to a default, so you could actually leave it as it is, and that's what I'm gonna do in my case. Um, I've already clicked on save, so now my changes are saved, uh, and there's really nothing else that I wanna do. And this is simply how you would um, enable storage to the historian. Now this is, um, I wanna say, much simpler than it used to be in maybe previous InTouch uh, releases so this is the 2023 release and it's as you can see it's just a checkbox and a few fields here and there to fill up
So now that we've configured historization, the last thing I want to do is actually to confirm that my tags are in the historian. And um, in order to actually show you that I have utilized a mode bus simulator, which is simulating values to the um, to the in touch tags that we have uh, that we have historized, and I would use the um, historian client trend tool to uh, confirm that we're getting the data. As you can see here, this is the historian trend tool. Um, this is the local historian that we're working with, and these are the tags. I just dragged and dropped a few of these tags. The events are, these are actually two pump tags, um, two pump PVs. So as you can see here, they're turning on and off. These are um, events that are also registered or logged, as you can see, because we've, we've also checked to log alarms and events. So now we've finished the process of um, logging data in our InTouch application and uh, configuring uh, storage to the historian. And also we went through the uh, store and forward properties. That brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching this video about um, historization and data logging in Aviva in Dutch 2023.